Hello, welcome to Let's Talk About Emotions. I'm Anton Texter, licensed DEI trainer and consultant, and here with me today is Jennifer Asdorian, who is also a fellow licensed DEI trainer and consultant. Today we're going to talk about naming emotions and how important it is to be able to put a name to that meh thing that you're feeling. This has been a really important process for both of us to go from kind of noticing that something is off to be able to name it and then know what to do with it and be able to take a conscious action to make it right or move on or do whatever needs to be done. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. And Jennifer, I was just wanting, wondering if you'd like to share a little bit of your process and your journey with that. Sure, when I first came to Language of Our Emotions, Carla's work, that first book, I, um, was really drawn to her emotional vocabulary list. And I remember it's free and I remember downloading it and just sitting, looking at all of these words. And I, I hadn't realized how limited my vocabulary was really. Like I, I had very few words for my range of emotions. My, it was narrow. And so I found it just pleasant, even just initially just to sit and look at all of these words and, and like get to know them. Like I, it was really, it felt very empowering, like, oh, something's happening here. And then as, as that sort of moved forward and I started to gain in vocabulary, then um, I just used it as a tool kind of on any given morning when I was feeling many things. Because I think for me now, I have so many mixed emotions coming up that I, I have to, I have to really sort through and find out which words match with everything that's happening inside. And so I did this just yesterday and I had about 10 different words pop up and, and they were confusing because they were a whole different smattering. And in a way I also, I felt comforted by doing that because then I was like, oh yeah, no wonder I'm kind of feeling so scattered because I had a scattering <laughs> of things going on inside. And then it allowed me to actually kind of just a little bit feel grounded and let go. And none of the things, none of the things that I named needed full attention for me. They just wanted to be known and named. And then I kind of moved on with my day. Um, it was, it was so pleasant. I, and I, the last emotion I had when I was doing that was kind of contentment. Like my emotions feel very content when they're seen and heard. Mm -hmm. um, even if I'm not in that moment taking a conscious action, that's almost like a different process for me, but just to be named, there is a, an ease that comes in. Like, yes, I, I'm seen now, I'm heard. That's really good. What do you do? What, what's your experience with the, the naming? Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely been a process of kind of thinking through the layers. And for me, I have, I grew up with a lot of um, not overt emotion shaming messages. It was, it was never don't cry. It was always a, like just a feeling of don't show emotion, right? So I was, I'm, I'm working through like many layers of repressing emotions, um, often to the point where I didn't know they were there, right? Or I couldn't identify what this weird feeling was in my body. And so for me, it's very much been a process of, well, I just feel kind of like, eh, today. And when I was able to start naming that, well, I'm irritated and I feel apathetic and uh, like powerless and, um, and I'm sad. And just being able to put names on it was, was revolutionary for me because that made it more concrete instead of this kind of gray cloud of meh, right? Where it's like, I don't feel good. Then once I, and this took, this took courage for me. I was so comfortable with the, with the meh that it was kind of scary to see, well, what's gonna happen if I name this? So actually putting my conscious awareness into naming these different emotions, I was, I was kind of afraid of what was going to come up for me. It was, I was, I was questioning, am I going to do something scary because I'm acknowledging my emotions? Yeah. 
did you, uh, that like, brings up the word shame to me. Like I, I had that same experience thinking, especially around anger, I wasn't allowed to feel anger. That wasn't an acceptable thing in my family. And so um, I felt the shame was the emotion that really kept me away from naming certain emotions. So. I, was, I just wonder if, if you also had to like go through the experience of the shame, the shame of feeling feelings. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it's, it was such a kind of like a deep undercurrent for everything else. Um, that now that I've been in this work for six years, I have, um, I've really been able to kind of, release those contracts, acknowledge and release those contracts around, um, I shouldn't feel anger. I shouldn't feel, I shouldn't say that I feel depression. I shouldn't say that I feel sad. I shouldn't say that I feel angry about these things. Right. right. And so as I've been able to kind of work through, acknowledge and work through these contracts, then it's the river of my emotions has become much more accessible to me. Yes. But when I started, it was very much um, like this layer of shame that kind of covered everything. And it really led to a lot of self-silencing, both with naming my emotions internally because I repressed everything, but also um, self-silencing like myself out in the world. Yes. So it was really about working with that, with the shame, but also with those contracts that I picked up as a, as a child, from my parents, from my peers, from my uh, teachers, from my coaches, all telling me that emotions weren't okay, that it wasn't okay for me to have strong emotions and that there was something wrong with me if I did. Which, by the way, is totally false. <laughs> it is so normal to have strong emotions yeah. because we care about things. Exactly, we have passionate, we have passionate feelings about things. We're humans. That's just a part of our existence. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking a little bit, this one experience popped into my head um, and it was almost like the reverse, reverse engineering something. So I was having a conversation, I was having a work issue and it was very at an intense level and I was working through many intense emotions and I was having a conversation with a person because it was a, it was a DEI consult, consultation and they were trying to help me sort it out. And I heard myself, I said the word over and over. I said, awkward, gosh, it feels so awkward. And I'd said awkward probably like 12 times in a matter of five minutes. And I was like, wait a minute, what does that mean? Like that word stuck out to me. And I was like, what family is that in? And I got out my list and I was like, oh, that's in the shame family. And it led me that way into then like, oh, this is a shame reaction because I knew what awkward was inside of myself, but I didn't really have a match for where that went in my emotional world or the emotion groups. And so I just remember like, and I, I know that about myself now, if I hear myself using a word to describe myself or my state and I use it over and over again, it's like, it's the, like, let's go check the list to see where that is. If I don't know it, I mean, now I know much more acutely where everything is, but sometimes I'm still surprised. And I just remember being like, this is shame. What do you mean? I couldn't believe it. Um, it was a surprise that that is. And then, and then it allowed me to say, okay, clearly shame is here. And this means I have a belief that is not working for me any longer. And then I got to figure out what work I needed to do so that that shame could be released of its, you know, its contract. And it was so helpful because otherwise I kind of was spinning or like floating above it all. You know what? I really couldn't sink down. It just was, um, it was much more on the surface. And so I sometimes think my language helps me, um, clue me into what's going on um, in terms of my in internal emotional world. And I appreciate that. Um, 
And, wow. and I think it's also great for listening. So if a person's using a word a lot, that's an emotional descriptor, you can go and say, oh, that, oh, you understand them. They were actually, that was a part of feeling sad or, or a little bit fearful. And it helps decode things almost. 